Who you Jeremiah is? Where you at, bro? Uh, where you at, bro? At the desert, hey. where you at, yo? Welcome <laughs> to the Cool You Chris and Friends podcast. We uh, back in the building. Oh, damn. Uh, back in the building. I right, turn up the volume on my earphones, bro. Turn that up, turn that up. Turn it up, turn it up. Check, check. All right. Here. Oh, it that's might, good. It Ooh. might actually be pretty loud. Yeah, that's good. That sounds good. I like it. So, restarting the podcast back from the Philippines. Back to the Philippines. We're gonna talk about it. Uh. From the islands, I saw so many people smiling. But then the politicians, they wildin'. Ooh. Trying to get that cash. Trying to overuse their power and chase that ass for the yeah. ladies. Doing it all now. Doing it for the cash that just flows on down with the blood that spills. Damn. Mm. Sometimes life is a little too real. I be shedding them tears mm. when I talk to them cooyas who said, Whoa, you gotta get used to what? struggle. The life that's real, huh? People be huh. fighting all in the jungle. Let us try to create a new type of deal. Mm. A new one that can get some peace for real, Woo. huh? My brother, can you tell us some stories? Uh, another yeah. allegory. Yeah, I'ma tell you some stories, and I know the struggle's not coming to the glory. So I'ma tell you it like this: People are fishing all that fish, cause we out here trying to farm. People in the in the ah, oh, damn, my stuff is all good. <laughs> Just trying to do it from the heart uh. Let me try to start another rap rhythm what, Hey, what? I'll be analyzing all these things that I've been seeing All in the Philippines See, education now is a little bit on that green tip mm. Profit over people, they're trying to privatize the educational system It's mm. a little bit evil, they be making billions While people keep paying uh, mm. Just so they can get some degree But man, people ain't free if they gotta leave the land that they've been growing up on mm. just to work as a slave as a domestic servant in another man's place mm. damn shout out though to the OFWs I see your beautiful brown o hues w's. this is uh, I know what you need to do huh damn tell me a little bit about your story dude yeah yeah uh. so here we go here we go we were chilling in Pasig City It was so little itty bitty And the climate of martial law in Mindanao Getting on the law It was so hard going to the checkpoints I was like man what is the point They're trying to ask for my last name And I didn't want to say anything Because the political climate's insane And I just want to tell you how I feel That the feeling in the Philippines is so real Coming back to San Francisco to the Bay I was like man how I'm gonna organize today So I want to be a part of the community So I tried to talk to my people Try to talk to everybody And I just tell you this What is up, Kuya Chris? Uh, what's up, Kuya Chris? That is on me. Now I'll be going across the bay to Berkeley Trying oh. to understand why are there so many uh, people who are privileged Trying to understand my own intersection See I'm a Filipino man but didn't grow in a mission Didn't grow mm. in here where the poor kids stay But now I just want to learn how to relate the stories of other kids So they can one day be great mm. Yeah I'm trying to speak on mm. the issues that are just uh, preventing the people from being free uh, Oh I just need need to tell you oh okay damn that was a little this freestyle though, oh shit this is the debut the debut <laughs> <laughs> the debut this is a debut of boy some vibes that we caught up in the philippines because you know sometimes we needed some coffee oh where's that we coffee would, at we would stop right here <laughs> But we would just go around the Philippines to a coffee shop And sometimes, oof, you see something that catches your eye mm. It just made me think that I wanted to give it a try Spit another rhythm off another flow I wanna let this lady know, ooh, you're looking beautiful I got, I got that Uh, coffee shop, coffee shop, coffee shop blues, yeah. yeah. I got 
and the coffee shop, coffee shop, coffee shop blues, yeah. Coffee shop blues, while I write my journals, while I write my life in the world is turning this is me trying to use another way for me to be speaking hey i'm a little latin a little puerto rican just kidding i'm filipino i'm seeking some truth in the lines that i write better yet maybe i can learn how come tonight they try to fight see i see weathers from april to may while conor mcgregor just tries to learn how to slay with another fist on the left but now i put my fist to the west because i know that i will travel throughout the world but better yet i I gotta, I gotta, I gotta throw it to my brother who is here to alleviate your stress, kid. Yeah, alleviate your stress like this. Cause I got the coffee shop, coffee shop, coffee shop blues, yeah. Uh huh, yeah. Coffee shop, coffee shop, coffee shop blues, yeah. Yeah, I'ma tell you like this. With this wrist, put my left fist in the air, and I'm telling you this over here. Uh. Yo, stop it, cause I'm about to drop it like this. Uh, I was walking to the Starbucks, man, I think I was really out of luck because I tried to slip my number on the counter, and she's like, man, boy, you is a slapper. <laughs> I slatted our motherfucker, she was racist uh, She didn't really wanted to get with them kids from the basic uh, She be saying, bruh, you a little too bruh, little too Asian With them slatted eyes, but I said, bruh, that ain't really my type of line I ain't trying to get with a lady who's down with the white supremacist uh, uh, Shout out to Alamo Square, Chrissy Field uh, It's a nigga want to date though Cause all these anti-fascists Oh, they said, oh no, not over here, yo But I just kicked it back home Cause I don't know what's gonna go on If I try to step on another person Will they shoot me a stone? Uh, I'd be stoned <laughs> What? What, boy? What? Shoot you a stone? Okay, last one. Oh shit, last one. This oh, one, this I found this one. one. This one's ill. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna let it loop like twice. Come on, go, go, go spit it, bro. Go, here we go. Yeah, put your hands up in the air. This hip hop thing, we don't care. Because we try to free ourselves. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression. This is another lesson. Gotta take care of your family, take care of the blessings. So here we go. From Philippines to San Francisco Daily city, itty bitty city By the water and the climate is getting hotter And the political ideology And I just wanna tell you this Pedagogy of the oppressed Yes, take that shit off your chest And de-stress with the decolonization Of the process And this is the process is now uh, the process is now, huh? The process is now. See their struggle right here in Mindanao. Uh, try to get the minerals from the ground while they're bobbing, huh? Shout out to Marawi with the box of Moro brothers. Be hitting them flow just to let people really know what's going on. See, there's a bullet flying, the homes are burned while the corporations just wait their turn. Cause once they destroy, rebuild, there's finances that will come on. They just keep on dancing strong. Cause they got so much culture Vultures just trying to get back in huh? I say, why don't we learn how to just do this and practice yeah. I gotta perform, gotta do it for the kids Gotta do it for the sisters who huh, never got the chance to live Who always got harder huh, protection from someone else uh, Let me try to tell you, people just fly in stealth See the US imperialists more, they be doing this Now it's a little bit of a miss, yo Cause I just want Wanna give a kiss, yo, to the kids who, to, to the kids who come on feeling weak, huh? I say, kid, why don't you learn how to speak through the hip hop, the raps? Damn, give me a dab, give me a dab, cause I wanna, huh?
Rock, brother, give it back. Give it back, give it Another back. Another loop, bro. Give it back, give, give it, it back. back. This is your chance to give it back. Anything that you have, yeah. I am a part of that, but like buying boxes that they try to process. And I just wanna do it for the kids struggling in, in the mountains, in the Baha'i football, trying to make a living. And I wanna put my heart to giving the relief and the love and the dialogue that comes all with it it's the strength of the people the mass movement and if you not know it then you gotta do it like it's nike or something but fuck that shit cause i go to do the change to buy my clothes buy my shoes i don't support corporations and these stupid fake news cause i'ma tell you this i always grind trying to not put my alarm on snooze uh, never on snooze Gotta wake up, dude <laughs> Gotta wake up, gotta wake up, yeah Don't be always stuck on snooze, get moving mm. See, what are you gonna do? Stop dreaming, my mm. kid Take some action, that's how you Take live action. See, there's people out in the jungle, jungle. Trying to do this for them kids what? Huh? Shout out to all my Asriya sisters mm. huh? She be working every day Just to teach mm. one or two grades huh? Everybody yeah. in the classroom Making the kids behave This is a little bit of a drastic truth huh? Mm. How you gonna make the most out of your own life? Mm. Well, you gotta to give it back to the ladies who uh, need mm. another help They only got a knife to mm. uh, plant some seeds And uh, build another mm. room See it sometimes floods But these kids they do, they do wanna learn So how, how about mm. you, how you gonna help, huh? How what you, you gonna, gonna do? Why you just gonna sit there in your damn room? Mm. Uh, are you gonna do something my little dude? Are you just gonna post on Instagram and do you? Uh -huh. <laughs> well it's too true Yeah, I'm a privileged motherfucker I know you uh, just <laughs> Are in the same lane So why don't we use this education to enlighten our brains huh? yeah. Why don't we use our Filipino name to reach out Use our resources Yeah, uh -huh. I give a shit about the kids who don't got that much huh? Why are you yeah. trying to sit over there? Why are you hushed? Uh, why you uh -huh. don't speak? Why you just sit behind your keyboards and type it out? Mm. Uh, yeah. I see you got a degree but it's mm. not all about The letters in front of your name It's what you actually do today uh, Shout out to the brothers who be in the Philippines, Whoa. being Pele, working every single damn day, uh. dedicating his life to this struggle, doing yeah. it now, huh, I know that he in trouble at times, but he knows how to push on past, he got the ray bars on his ray eyes bond. real fast, it's hella cheap, fuck the Ray-Bans, fuck mm. the new shit, fuck them Yeezys, I bought a Ooh. fake one too, huh, it's a little too easy, I paid five bills, but that's in pesos, fuck this Mr. Drastic little case, yo, uh, uh that's a mental case. Case y'all, drastic little case y'all, little case y'all. Ha, ha, yeah. Yeah, I see that you grind a nine to five uh, just to please the corporate capitalists. But I just wanna tell you this: uh, one day the poor is gonna make a fist, uh, and I'ma tell you this: one day, every day, we gon' take over the uh, oppression. And I just wanna tell you: free yourself and free your mind. Don't be. Deaf, dumb and blind And then you'll find In the nick of time That you will live In rhythm and happiness Yeah Rhythm and happiness Rhythm and happiness Yeah Rhythm and happiness, my G. Bro, oh, you gotta edit this. <laughs> you gotta you edit this about? podcast, bro. Why? <laughs> that was good. That was I that was good. We a little rusty. Yeah, I yeah. feel the rust. But but up. we back. Yeah. What's up? What's up? I haven't like done rapping in a while after coming He's back. Fine. So this is the bro. Yeah. I've been watching <laughs> Wild and Out clips. Oh shit, dude, they're good. Let's they're go. good at rapping. They're good at their freestyle and it's wordplay and it's quick off the dome. Like, yo, they're on it, dude. That's multiple, true. multiple syllable rhymes and with wordplay and all. They're good at improvising. That's what I yes. need to work on, man. Yes. yes. But, anyways, welcome back from the Philippines, my G. Man, welcome back to us, bro. Just to that us. transition, man. To us. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to us. <laughs> Welcome back to Usa. <laughs> Usa. Yes. Usa. 
So, <laughs> just so folks have a little info, we just came back from a uh, community exposure trip in the Philippines. Beautiful. Beautiful. This was your first time in the Philippines. This was my first time in the Philippines. Took a shit uh, next to Kuya Jeremiah, <laughs> who was with us on the trip. Man, we took a shit in the fields. Man, a goat was staring at me. And it was beautiful. It's so simple living. Mm. I got to buy some <laughs> uh, mango wine. Oh, mango shit. Wine. I should actually get it right now. pop it open right oh, now, Oh, shit. Bro. Celebrate. Okay, tell them a story while I go get okay. the wine. Tell y'all a story. All right. So, a story. So, one night, it was our first leg on the trip. And we went up to the Aita community up in northern uh, Manila, uh, near, near, uh, hey, shh. hey, sexy, this was uh, up in Pampanga area, I'm not too familiar what uh, province it was, but it was way up high in the highlands and um, in the mountains, and so one night, we were in our Baje Kubo living with the family, and I just hear a lot of babies crying. And I just remember just Kuya Jeremiah's just snoring really loud. And he was like, <sighs> and then, man, all these babies were crying like, Wah. I'm like, Kuya Jeremiah's lower your snoring. And he was like, mm. you know, he makes that little moan sound. Like, mm. But. Anyways, that's the story. And it was cool. It was fun. And speaking of which, I... During our first leg of the trip, we were sleeping again. This was probably like the second night. And I hear these... All these dogs barking. This was in the middle of the night. I was like, why are these dogs barking? And I hear Christian like, oh, I gotta go pee, man. I gotta go pee. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, bro, just pee in a bottle or something. Pee, pee on the floor. He's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I, I ended up peeing in a bottle the <laughs> next night. <laughs> so we were in the Aita community, right? Yes. And then that was when we were living in this Baha'i Kubo mm -hmm. for the night. And the dogs, they're like good watchdogs. They are right? good watchdogs. Very protective, but not too friendly. No, None of these dogs want to be pet. They just want to be fed food. Yeah, yeah. It's a different dynamic, huh? Yeah. That you see here. Like, mm -hmm. my dog will just come up to you to get petted, mm -hmm. right? But there, they even avoid just people in general. Mm -hmm. Maybe because... Like, I saw how they treat some of the puppy dogs. If they do something bad, they just fucking hit it, right? Yeah. And so, it's just trained to, like, all right, I'll just be a kind of good dog, but mm -hmm. avoid human contact like that. But they're yeah. still part of the tribe, they're in a part sense. part of the family still. Yeah. And it's crazy. They... I feel like the dogs there are just trained to survive, just like how everybody is in the Philippines, where they still have to, the dogs actually take care of one another, take care of their babies, take care of their puppies, but are also protective of other dogs going near them or near their babies or their puppies. So they just start barking and fighting, but not fighting like biting each other, but just like barking, like, go away, get away from my kids. And I'm like, Man, just the theme of survival there is beautiful because we could all learn from it. Ooh, this mm. mango is so good. shout out to Paradise Mango Rum mm. Likia, Likia. Uh, oldest distillery in the Philippines, established in 1852. Mm -hmm. What? Produced and bottled by Destilleria Lim Tuaco and Company Inc. So we have it's mango rib liqueur. Toast, brother. Hey man, you, gotta look, you gotta look into the eyes oh, yeah, for good oh, yeah. luck. Yes. Yeah. We were taught by our local organizers Ooh. that if you don't do that, you'll have bad luck. Mm-hmm. So, oh, damn, that's strong. Yeah, that's it's good. really strong. It's pretty sweet. Um, but it's 16, so it's like a good wine mm. um, percentage volume. But anyway, for some context, right? 
We went to the Philippines mm-hmm. through Laya, Dude, Migrant Laya. Youth for Change in Action, LayaYouth.com. Laya, represent- Check it out. Um, on a community exposure trip with a focus on education. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to see what's going on in education curriculum with teachers, students, and how we can support mm-hmm. as Filipino Americans, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so... Let's see. Let's see what some of these pictures are as a flashback. We started yeah, off, yeah, peace right, set, boy, with peace set, people, solidarity, Community and education tours. tours, education tours. Yeah, education. incorporated, right? Um, and they were chill. They were dope. Yes, dope organizers led by women organizers. Because you know what they say. It is true. Women hold half of the sky, uh. and. I'm very thankful for these sisters to help us with this trip or very open our eyes to the Philippines. So they brought us to two main locations, right? In the Oh, but first shout out to Atelin. Atelin, very dope. At the Reish. At the Mayet. Mm-hmm. They gave us like a full rundown on the status of the Philippines. First, it being majority, right? Just the overall um how would we say summary of like social economic conditions the history right majority Mm -hmm. farmers 75 percent right um same thing that we see in other parts of the world where the one top one percent control Mm -hmm. majority of businesses and even the government Mm -hmm. right and then we actually go to ebon uh which was pretty cool right ebon was like a think tank and publishing group that does research in education poverty the and a whole bunch of stuff that's like actually research publications yes and very accurate data Mm. very accurate news and it's also used globally as well not just in the Mm. philippines um ebon stands for bird so this was actually created for the for real news during the Marcos time yes. in the 1970s because news was also being halted. News was um, very needed during that time, during martial law. So Ebon, that's how Ebon sprang up. And was dope to remember is that a bunch of the folks who started it were nuns and were in the mm. religious sector. And uh, they wanted alternative sources of news Mm -hmm. because the main news uh sources were not telling the true stories not telling the truth it sounds very familiar to what's going on now so very thankful for these types of news stations yeah they had the and they have curriculum that they bring to schools it was cool that we went to ebon first yeah got like a primer and then we actually mm. saw an ebon book at a school in mindanao yes where we went and seeing ebon seeing their logo being used in schools is very good because i'm like they're teaching nationalistic things that are relevant to and very needed in their education especially with what's going on to now with the new change of from k to 12 Mm. so do you want to give what you remember about k to 12 yes k to 12 was implemented by benoy beningo aquino bit what's his name yeah benigno benigno b b aquino something like that (laughs) Yeah, the, the Ninoy Aquino. Nino Wait, Aquino. I mean Noi Noi Aquino. Sorry, Noi Noi Aquino. Noi Noi Aquino is his name. Uh, is the previous president? I recall it was in 2011 when it yeah, got implemented. When it got implemented, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm not sure. I should I'm actually sure. get my notes. We are spreading disinformation. <laughs> 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 but anyway, what I remember is the implementation <laughs> process was going on around 2015. Uh, there you go, okay. 2014, 2015, 2015, around that time. Mm. And from K to 12, it was a change for it to be the same as America mm. with their K to 12. And it before, 
uh, being K to twelve, it was from K through ten. K through so 10. technically, yeah. So basically, if we think about the U.S. system, there wouldn't be a middle school. No middle right? school. So it was K to six, mm-hmm. right? And then they would go straight from sixth grade mm-hmm. to what they call eighth grade, but then that's high school. Mm-hmm. So they go only eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, mm-hmm. seven, eight. 9, 10. Mm. There's no 11 and 12 grades. Mm-hmm. But now they added on. So f- you go from K to 6. Mm-hmm. Then you go to four years of a high school. Mm. Then you go two years of what they now call senior high. Senior so high. 11 and 12. And then from senior high, you you actually choose what path you want to take. There is this STEM path. There's this agrarian or agriculture path, humanities path. And then, uh, was it law? I think, I think it differs from school to school. And then you get into this tech also. Yeah. And a lot of the tech ones, like these tech vocational schools, actually, um, they get offered to just work in America or in the States to be um, workers like a cash register, um, uh A janitor or... Yeah, some of the courses that they offer at these high schools are... Some you can argue, oh, it's good. It's maybe pre-law or STEM things. But also others that they they have focused more on vocational tasks such as massage therapist Mm -hmm. or welder or... Um, I forgot what else. A domestic worker Mm -hmm. or like housekeeping. They have those... Uh, courses and I think the, one of the criticisms is that it is m- not necessarily pre- preparing the students to go to college but it's preparing them to just work right out of high school mm. in order to be exported labor mm-hmm. because the Philippines right I think 10% of the GDP comes from remittances from overseas Filipino workers mm. so the criticism is that yo this setup is not really encouraging matriculation to college but it's encouraging folks to actually leave the Philippines and just become foreign workers yeah. instead of developing them internally for the philippines mm-hmm. and getting them and supporting them for college yeah and yeah. some people i can see the uh argument like oh why why not why not why because, not have filipinos work abroad yeah why I, not i work abroad I, I wanted to leave the philippines actually yeah, yeah. And uh, that, like, for example, I've heard the argument that, I mean, that's good. That there's no jobs in the Philippines. There's no opportunities for them to work there. So might as well send them abroad as soon as possible. That's the question. Why isn't there any jobs in the Philippines? Mm. When there is the, the, I don't know the numbers, but the population of Filipinos is a lot. A lot of Filipinos it's are like in the uh, Philippines. Like hundred huh? million, I think. Yeah, Something and why like is it, why is there unemployment, and why aren't they having these opportunities? Why is it that they're sending Filipinos abroad instead of building up the economy of the Philippines? Mm. So it's it's like what is the focus of the government and the programs that they implement in these institutions? Mm. Is it really for internal development mm. and for the empowerment? of the philippines Mm -hmm. or is it to ship filipinos abroad in order to maintain or even increase these remittances Mm -hmm. but we have seen problems with the focus on foreign work because Mm -hmm. such as there's the breakup of families where kids aren't growing up with their parents around they Mm -hmm. have the Rights being imp- in in print infringed and in, in ah, fudge. infringed infringed yeah. yeah infringed upon yeah. in foreign nations yeah. where they don't have as much um, rights. rights or yeah. even protection right because they're not citizens in those countries um, and where's the support so those are the criticisms right yeah like if the Philippine government is to implement programs then they should be for the benefit of filipinos as a whole Mm. rather than just to maintain the gdp which we see can get misappropriated such as in pork barrel schemes or um, corruption in the government and look at this worsening crisis 21 million on low poverty threshold of 60 
pesos a day. Ibon estimates two out of three Filipinos survive on 125 pesos a day. 125 That's around two dollars, bruh. Dog. So two I out of three Filipinos. <laughs> Shit. That's that's two dollars, bro. That's less than half, dog. That's crazy. Cause I just like think about how I I pay six bucks for a four by four in and out. Yeah. Um <laughs> animal style, right? That shit's hella good. It's hella good. But then to <laughs> think like what the fuck? I how are they like, surviving? People can survive off or they have to survive. They have to survive off yeah. that little amount of money and how is it when it's expensive to bring your children to school and still survive off that? Mm. It's, it's like can I still bring my child to school? Mm. And we've seen in some places where the kids have to pay for their own school supplies. Yeah. We've seen where kids go to school without even any slippers, right? Yeah. We can get into that once we get to those pictures. So we have some more pictures. Excuse me about the K to 12 we learned mm -hmm. from Ebon and we also thank you Ebon. Um got to visit uh Oh, that's me in the mall. We got to visit ACT, ACT Alliance of Concerned, Concerned Teachers. Teachers up in the Philippines. I forgot the good man who was breaking it down, the info. What's his name again? Kuya. Rudy? Rudy? Yeah, no, I feel Rudy. it's wrong. Uh, man. I have it in my notes. This is what happens my when we don't prepare. <laughs> <laughs> We're just speaking through the heart right now. <laughs> and this is the podcast. <laughs> At least we ain't presenting in front of people, bro. <laughs> no. Um, so uh, this picture is uh, Dessa <laughs> um, um, and uh, Jeremiah's <laughs> laughing and uh, Kevin, his hand is up because he's uh, airing out his armpit. <laughs> yeah, it was really hot. <laughs> Yo, but I really like where the location of this was. It was really deep in the roots of the Philippines. Um, in Was it in Quezon City? I think so. It was in Quezon right. City and man, it was hidden. Yeah. Hidden, bro. <laughs> but the numbers that they hold are crazy. Are freaking huge. They have around more than 100,000 registered uh, voters mm -hmm. and members in this Alliance of Concerned Teachers. So I think it's a dual thing. It's both a party list where they get representation in Congress, mm -hmm. but also a, a sort of union. So they have 125,000, I think, public school teachers under their organization that they represent. And they're trying to fight for a wage increase because... Mm -hmm. The Mr. Duterte, when he was running, I believe promised a doubling of salary for teachers. Mm. Teachers right now earn around 18,000 pesos a month. That is around $400 a month. 400 bucks a month. 400 bucks a month. That sucks. Uh, to be a full-time teacher and some of these teachers have hundreds of students like in a day they're buckling they, down a lot of stress but they're doing it for the greater good yep to be a teacher in the philippines is another level of commitment and passion and just passion shout out to atabea yes thank you atabea for your work that's kind of why I am inspired to be a teacher too is because it's planting seeds and I think that is the most important part. Ah, yeah. True. You can move the mic if you need oh, to. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So that was ACT. They're doing a whole CT, bunch boy. of um, like research and mobilizations for the teachers. But what stood out to me what? was them telling us about the privatization of and education the contractualization of education too yes right? yeah. so uh, i think their one example was uh, uh i forgot it's a three letter uh, acronym for these schools sti i think sti is one of them STI. and there's another um organization that does private schools but what happened was they're able to use the vouchers that government provides yeah. and they're able to set up schools quickly even bypassing some requirements of private schools mm -hmm. somehow they're able to get that maybe they have a connection in government to get the approval but they've privatized education that they've made a profit out of education and mm -hmm. the report is in this year they've made more than like a billion 
pesos in profit from education and it's not really benefiting the students or it's it's kind of using the public funds for private profit there you go couldn't that be used in a public school couldn't that be used to support these t- children who aren't able to even go to school because there's not enough schools i think that was one of the um, statistics that were given to us that there was like because of the lack of actual schools there are more than a few million maybe three million students who weren't able to transition from elementary to high school to the next stage because of just the lack of schools the lack of schools and where does that money go to the pocket to the big malls ayala mall or SM like to mall. the big families yeah big like families. these big families have um invest have diversified their portfolios mm-hmm. where they're making money in as many sectors as possible mm-hmm. and these are like the richy rich this is it's, it's almost kind of hard to fathom how rich some of these people are but a good example is that there's an area called the fort and yeah. it was old fort bonifacio i think and the whole area is has malls in it it has um restaurants all these it's it's a big area full on streets and everything and that's all privately owned from mm-hmm. my understanding by a family by like a group which is ayala but i think that the Ayala company itself is just run by a certain family. They reap all the benefits. It's kind of crazy to think that there are certain families in the Philippines you can that people know their names, right? It's publicly known that they run the shit. They run it. Like the malls, SM Mall, you'll see is uh, like the C family. And then you have, you hear these names all around Cojuanco or um, the Aquinos or... Um, these folks who have are big landowners, right? Yeah, and they just it's they crazy. just run. Shit. While they exploit students and families, they are still going to run down schools, underpaid teachers, and underfunded schools. Like we were in, what school did we go to? Uh, PUP. PUP. And PUP was a really big school, but. I, there was still more work to be done if you compare to the schools here in San Francisco. And it's like really nice. And they deserve that school when there's a lot of students going to these schools, man. Look yeah. at that, bro. It's hella nice outside. But when you go inside, <laughs> you go inside. no air. Dude, no restrooms. No I think the, the estimate was one restroom for every thousand students. Man. Imagine sharing a restroom with a thousand students. Why can't they have quality education? Why? Because the money goes somewhere else. These students, man. And so we got to go to PUP. What was cool is we actually got to join uh, some groups to do room-to-room outreach. So uh, at least when I was there, I think it was um, a group from... from, UP Dileman, the LFS group, League of Filipino Students, that were LFS. doing outreach at PUP. And they went from room to room to help mobilize um, a mobilization that would happen in front of PUP like later on, right? So it was cool just to see that outreach part where yeah. they're going from actual physically room to room and saying, hey, can we talk to y'all for a minute? Mm-hmm. And then just outreaching, hey, do you know what's going on with martial law? Do you mm-hmm. know that it's, um, a, it could be extended in a few days yeah. and all ar- across Mindanao? Do you know what's going on in Mindanao? Mm-hmm. Like all these questions, both kind of informing mm-hmm. and also mobilizing. Mm-hmm. So letting people know about issues and then trying to get them to participate mm-hmm. in an action or at least in the conversation. Mm-hmm. And... When I saw it, I was like, damn, that's dope. I want to do that here. Mm. I want to be more active in just outreaching and being forward. Hey, these are things going on, and we really need to address these things. And, yeah, and As the youth, as true. people who have the capacity to do something. 
Um, one of the questions were why were UP Dilemon students doing this? Why not PUP students? And there's like two factors of it. Like, hmm, I think it's cool that UP students are entering into this institution and also um, inspiring PUP students. But why aren't there PUP students actually, you know, contributing to it? Huh. But there was a little bit of PUP students contributing to mobilizing that uh, mobilization. So, I mean... But I think it's still a good thing, something we can learn from. Like as we go out to our schools, yeah. we can go to Skyline. <laughs> yep, we there. still have to stay connected with Skyline and uh, contribute to the development there. Mm -hmm. Like not just leaving and like, okay, bye-bye, good yeah. luck, right? We kind of have a, in my opinion, some sort of responsibility to still be connected with the communities that we've come from, Yeah. right? and that are representative of us that mm -hmm. are that have people just like us mm -hmm. right shout out to skyline college kababai learning community where there's hella filipinos yeah right but i saw a picture of cypher shout out to cypher shout out to cypher they're doing work they had like a deep open house yes um, it was huge yeah and they have this dude nate Nevado is doing some work He's always been doing work Dude, Never he stopped. helped start KLC, yeah. right? Kababan Learning Community. And then now he helped start Cypher. Mm -hmm. This guy is doing stuff. Shouts out to Janice Sapiga, though. She um, left her term at Skyline College, actually. And what? Went to San Jose Community College. Yeah, her hometown. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that. No, damn. You should block this. <laughs> Maybe she didn't want anybody to know. No, well, it's public, isn't it? <laughs> it was public. It was on Instagram. <laughs> Sorry, Janice. Happy birthday, Janice. <laughs> uh oh. No, I didn't know that. I was like, oh, shit. But I mean, shout out to Janice, her Microchips for Millions book, oh, published yes. by Pawa, the Philippine artists and writers mm -hmm. association i think yeah um and she's been doing more events mm -hmm. and outreach for her book and all mm -hmm. and it's been getting good reviews that's what's dope to see i love skyline college i love i love community college i love skyline couple Bayan. the teachers there are all connected from pep from la from to san francisco united players soma filipino a uh, community down in excelsior man that is the whole point of being a part of a community man and like i have so much to just learn from that because i want to be a part of that because you can't live this life alone man we're social beings bro uh. and all of our theories all of these good work they're they're not nothing new it's all derived from leaders from the past who believe in the movement of community uh, it's beautiful uh, and out, they're taking action yeah shouts out to uh, paulo fier uh, the pedagogy, pedagogy of the oppressed. oppressed have you been reading it up um i, I downloaded the pdf because it's free because i'm <laughs> college student <laughs> <laughs> shout gotta out do those to, pdfs shout out to lenny strobel lenny with, uh, strobel process of decolonization <laughs> and coming full circle baby damn all these books i want to meet her she's she's so like it's it's kind of crazy to think that these are people that are here and that we have access to mm -hmm. because at least for that book coming full circle that really ingrained in my head to really even finish school yeah and to continue after that first semester i the first semester back to community college i was just like i'm gonna take these filipino classes because i just wanted to like learn filipino shit mm -hmm. and then that book which was really talking about how we need people that look like us in positions of power and success and excellence in order for the youth yeah. to really envision their own capability and their own willingness in a sense mm -hmm. to be excellent mm -hmm. and to strive for greater things That's true. and we have to put our own bodies up there mm -hmm. right instead of just speaking about it yeah. right we got we gotta be it you gotta be the change you want to see so moment. shout out to jeremiah's david oh my gosh look at that pogi boy shout out to dessa hippolito oh yeah dessa 
Uh, we were the four person group representative of Laya um, on this trip this summer. It's still unbelievable. Still shout out to Jeremiah though, because he needs to come on to my podcast, but he I thinks know. he won't be a good guest. I won't be a good guest. Yeah. But I think he'll be a great one. He has so much to guess. share. Vi- um, so much. He just went to a um, a panel, open forum panel. He was one of the guest panelists to speak about um, more information about martial law. It was actually at the Manila Town Kearney Street I Hotel. And um, I hope he did good. I know he did good. Was it today? It was actually last Friday. Oh. So, yeah. There was an event today um, streaming the... Um, I think those folks from the National Democratic Front and the negotiating teams Mm -hmm. um, that because the peace talk negotiations have fallen um, between the government of the Philippines and the National Democratic Front. Mm -hmm. And then they were doing like an update on what it all means now. Yeah. But I wasn't able to catch it. Yeah, maybe next podcast with Jeremiah will hit you up. Yes, on. he'll give us the, the rundown. Okay, maybe so here are our pictures brother. of traveling through the Philippines. <laughs> okay, Yay. we got Kuya Kev up in his malong. In the malong in the jeepney. In the jeepney. And then we have uh, Ka Elmer. Ka Elmer. What, why why did you say Ka Elmer? Bakit? They call them Ka like Kasama. Ah. Um, and then, uh, like, if you notice, some folks call each other that. Ah. Like, they just do ka, like, in the beginning. Ka Sani. Uh, awesome. What is this fool's name again? There was Ka Sani and Ka Edwin. This is Ka Edwin, right? Oh, oh that's Ka Edwin. Very oh. cool. So, we got to meet I- an Aita community. That's the, f- that's the first place we went for integration. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about it. Man, Aita community. Well, first, like Aita, they were they are an indigenous group founded in like 1200 BC, right? BC, I think so. 1200 BC. I don't know if you could say founded. <laughs> like they've just they're just an indigenous just indigenous, indigenous group, group in the Philippines. In the Philippines, and arguably that they were there before spanish colonization yes, yes. and all that time they're one of those um they say ips in the philippines indigenous peoples mm-hmm. um and so as a as a tribe in a sense mm-hmm. like their physicality is different from other filipinos um they're on average shorter than other like filipinos four four, four five, five. Not far. I think that's too short. <laughs> too short he was yeah. probably four, four nine, nine, four ten, like that. Um, and but they were significantly shorter than mm-hmm. us on average. Um, and then they're really dark skinned, and a lot of them, majority of them, have curly hair. Mm-hmm. They actually differentiate people from the outside with unat, right, which unat. means straight haired. Straight haired. Someone yeah. who's straight haired is usually not um, from their area or not an Aita, maybe yeah. if they got mixed blood. Mm-hmm. Um, but majority of the folks that we actually visited once we got into the community were curly-haired. Kulit. Right? Uh, kulot. Kulot. Kulot, which means curly-haired. Kulit <laughs> means like... Um, you're you're uh, like uh, Feisty. Feisty. Yeah, or troublemaking. Kulit. You're so kulit, like, like annoying oh, slash God. fun annoying oh, no, like that's that. that's bad. Yeah. Kulot, kulot. <laughs> Kalut. yeah. But so, anyways, this was led by Atemeg, though. Yeah, shout out to Atemeg. Atemeg, we miss you. <laughs> Atemeg <laughs> was our, like, spiritual guide throughout the Philippines. S- spiritual guide, very <laughs> critique, very good at cr- critiquing us and how we do. Yo, shout out, though, to Atemeg, because when I first saw her, she was... She's our counselor, bro. The, she is our counselor. She was a volunteer for PSET that accompanied us to the indigenous community and stayed with us mm-hmm. uh, throughout that section of our trip. And There's a picture of Atemeg. Put a picture on All the way. Still all the way oh, in the okay, end, okay. I think. Um, Atemeg, where are you? Atemeg. So at first I was like, who is this lady? Like, oh, And she was like kind of quiet and she... 
um didn't really say that much she was just chilling a little bit and then but her magic oh, came over oh, right here there, there. at the meg there you go at the meg so her magic came out like that second day when we started doing like assessments mm-hmm. yeah. on how we're doing uh what we do how we integrate with the community like one example is don't come in with some sort of savior mentality yeah right that messiah. messiah complex right that mm-hmm. oh you're the foreigner you're coming visiting an indigenous group and you have the answers or saying yo education is the most important do this do that and not lear- learning how to not impose your own values and what you consider important into the community powering off, powering off. i just turned off the speaker yeah, that's good. um and she was able to tell that to us in a very like chill and like accepting way not not very not antagonistic or anything imposing it on us yeah and she also gave that love advice yeah she's the best very sharp in her psychology but like it was very approachable i can talk to you sharp yo she's highly educated she did her um ba in psychology then her master's in psychology and then she works i think as a consultant for different companies Mm -hmm. but what she really said why she did that master's is she saw that there's need for counseling and mental health services amongst organizers and in these organizing circles that's pretty dope like to really see a need and then going into the educational path in order to gain the skills so that you can serve the community i'm gonna change my major now bro (laughs) (laughs) damn not to make (laughs) she also had these like little insights that still stuck with me like she said you know christian um sometimes it's okay to be silent or to sit with the silence Mm -hmm. because she pointed out that sometimes i try to fill the silence with like jokes yeah or, (laughs) or like just say something Mm -hmm. especially when i'm talking with like the locals but she said you know maybe just sit with the silence maybe they're processing maybe you can take some time to process and it's not awkward if you don't think it's awkward and i was like oh maybe it was like another epiphany and then i was just like okay Mm -hmm. and i would just sit in silence sometimes and it'll be chill it'll be fine like it's interesting how little pieces of advice can change your paradigm. Yeah. Or how you approach things and how you conduct yourself. Yeah. That's not the Meg. That's the power of a counselor. Yeah. And then she gave us hella love advice. <laughs> yeah. I felt there were times when I felt that we were just Breaking sitting in the Baha'i Kubo. I thought I was like on a couch with a therapist of just <laughs> speaking out. Exactly. But that's the importance of going on these trips with good people, mm-hmm. right? Very so, fun. Yeah, very fun. So give me some thoughts about the Aita community. Aita community, very welcoming, loving people. Very. Um, I didn't really know what religion they were, but I know Kuya Elmer was, or now was a Kuya Elmer. Who's the other one? He was, he, was, he was Muslim. I'm like, they didn't really talk about their religion. Yeah. But their location... Wow, it is very in the highlands, and it was weird just seeing a part where um, a land that they didn't own because that land was owned by the government, so they couldn't go there. But you could, you could poo there, you could pee there, <laughs> but you can't farm or create your own land there. So they didn't have toilets. No toilets That's at the all. First thing. No toilets. Um, they live in these Baha'i Kubo took at least two months to build these houses and they actually have to go down to the hardware store to buy these materials buy and some of like the nails the and nails like, um i don't know about the weaving but the, they make the themselves they make the, themselves yeah, from like bamboo from some of the other resources mm-hmm. available the plants around them and stuff native ch- they grow their native chicken mm-hmm. and they eat that chicken but they usually go to the river to fish get some fish um i think because chickens they only save that for special occasions right yeah and they cooked a lot of chicken for us because 
I guess. I mean, that they were was the guest. The, yeah. They were the guest. Um, they smoke a lot of tobacco <laughs> uh, to spare their time, or you know, maybe it was for them to trying to get a black and mild. <laughs> 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 um, but they really rely on the land, and the people there are. I'm uh, I'm, I'm gonna cry, bro. But they're very. Uh, it makes me realize um, how different people grow up, man, uh-huh. and like they grow up in in these situations where they just have to learn to survive. It's really humbling to me because coming back home, my brothers are just doing this, doing that. I'm like, man, these kids actually wake up, make their own food. Or go to go and then go to school like early in the morning. Clean the house. Very simple and modest life, man. And like, honestly, it's very. I could only say it's very humbling. But mm. that's the Aita community for me. How about for you, bro? What you get in for the Aita? I think what got to me was their sense of community yeah. was pretty strong. Like mm-hmm. they have. They they would sit in circles, just hang out and talk mm-hmm. all the time. And then their organization, they would have their meetings. They would just talk and mm-hmm. update one another about what's going on. Right? They ain't on phones. They ain't disconnected or all on the computer taking mm-hmm. notes. This and that. They're just in a sense hanging out but it's a different type of hanging out because Mm -hmm. they're just together they're they're more of doing things together that their lives are together Mm -hmm. right as a group and then it is kind of apparent in the way that they do their kind of more uh kind of law yeah. right because their law is eye, for an eye, eye for an eye so an example is somebody who killed somebody the previous week or so um a few weeks before we got there we heard mm-hmm. the story of somebody killed someone mm-hmm. and then the elders in the community had a meeting and decided okay we have to kill this person who killed someone, mm-hmm. right? Because if you take someone's life, your life will be taken away. Mm-hmm. And they killed that person, yeah. right? But just imagine being in a circle of those elders, like deciding, right? And talking about mm-hmm. these things, like yeah. having those meetings, like, oh, what do we do in mm-hmm. a sense? We didn't get to sit in on these meetings, right? No. But we got to kind of see them going on yeah. where they would just be in a circle, like, and... The, it's just so simple that you wouldn't really make much of it if you just see them sitting in a circle, right? Because they're just sitting on a bench and uh, so informal, mm-hmm. right? There, there's no, it doesn't look super fancy, mm-hmm. but it's the manifestation of their culture that yeah. they are a collective in a way. And yeah. yeah, that was dope. It was dope. And just to see the resilience they have in organizing each other, um, especially through the discrimination they go through when coming down to the lowland of the city, just because their skin and their hair, they're like looked down upon. Mm. And it's, it's, uh, not only sad, but I think it's, there's still, if you say there's still racism happening, this is that type of social class racism that's happening. Um, and it's, you could see the social construct it's evident they are left to be not taken care of you know from the government because they are just pushed behind um to live far away f- from you know from society but they still make a living they were also dispersed from mount pinatubo during yep, the eruption yep, yep. Yeah. So in 1991, when Mount Pinatubo erupted, a whole bunch of the indigenous communities had to evacuate from the area, mm-hmm. um, and including the Aita. And so the Aita, they were dispersed. And one story that we heard, though, was they were dispersed to some relocation sites. Their relocation sites were so bad and cramped that there was an actual outbreak, I believe, of measles mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Like 45,000 of them died. Mm-hmm. Um, a group of them, some of them wanted to return 
return to Mount Pinatubo. Mm-hmm. But once they returned, they realized that the government had already signed away their land mm. for mining operations and for ecotourism yeah. developments. So without any warning, nothing. without any warning or consideration for their yeah. ancestral land, right, mm-hmm. uh, where they've been living, and then. The, so some of them, I believe, were able to return to some locations, but now the other groups have been spread apart in different provinces: yeah. Tarlac, Pampanga, mm-hmm. and uh, I forgot the other one. Um, but they're just spread apart in different areas, mm-hmm. and we see like a lack of how do you say government support or even consideration for these indigenous groups the root of filipinos right yeah that's right it's the same thing that happens here in the u.s with mm. native americans right um but here let me ask you right yeah this was yes. your first trip to My the philippines trip. right what were some of the thoughts or what's that feeling like on your first trip you're not really doing the touristy things of the beaches and all that but you went to these indigenous communities and you see this disparity of uh, even resources or even the living conditions quality of life Mm -hmm. where there's no toilet in Mm -hmm. comparison to the cities where we went to nice malls with with excesses of Mm -hmm. luxury right yeah I I my first time, I say that my politics uh, was politicized in terms of the passion part of it. Like, this is where I want to be. This is who I want to work with. And this is who I want to work for is with these indigenous peoples, with these uh, people's solidarities, uh, educational tours, because they are doing good work. Uh, they are organizing um, students. And they're organizing in a way to uh, unveil the 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 corruption of of the system, and um, I want to be a part of that because um, during this trip, they were saying to become a leader, you must change yourself. You know, you have to. Uh, change yourself organize yourself how how can you organize other people when you can't organize yourself you know Mm. and coming from the talks here during this um, trip really helped me to realize this is also who I want to be when I get older when I grow up and when I graduate to further that narrative further that talk because it's important for those who don't receive any type of accurate news it's important for those who are not aware of that there are people like this living in these conditions without any help from the government and it's i just want our future and our world for the next years to come to be a better place to live in because uh what's the point of living if you for me if you can't you can't help to contribute to that you know um but for my first time in the philippines this is where the spark of passion again has been on fire at first it was skyline kababayan and now this um it's only going to be better from here on out. What do you envision yourself doing from the, with that passion, that fire? I envision myself becoming a community organizer. To say this, it's crazy. Like People say they want this job because of, I want a house, I want a car, I want a better stable living. But when I hear them and, they, and I ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a teacher so I could help out this community. I want to be a doctor so I could help the sick of this community. And I'm like, that's inspiring. So I want to be a teacher also to help out this community and help out other communities that are in this condition. I also want to help out become a community organizer, like I said, to help out this community as well. Yeah, it was a trip where 
we would ask that question, right? Mm-hmm. And to the group that was evacuated yeah. in UP Diliman, yeah. where some of the kids said, "Yeah, I just." When we asked, "What do you want to see in the future?" Like thinking that they would answer something about uh, their, "What do you want in the future?" Mm-hmm. Something about their personal life. Mm-hmm. Or, I want this or that, um, this car, this this job. And then the answer was, I want to see my community safe and uplifted and able to have education. Yeah, yeah like what? Like this is so a, selfless of you to say. Yeah, like a total different answer from even ourselves, myself, and other youth that we run into in, like, say here, where yeah. we're conditioned to really think of our own personal mm. success, right? Mm. What do you want? I want a car. I want bitches. I want yeah. to uh, be on the charts. I want, mm-hmm. like, um, whatever status symbol, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, what is this? What is this photo? Shout about? out oh to God. shirtless Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. It's fudge out there. No, you're you're shirtless with Kuya Jeremiah's um, going over notes. He was doing an ED with you, if I remember right. Educational discussion about the the different organizing structures in the Philippines, the different power dynamics between different groups. Shouts out to Joma. Shouts out to Joma. <laughs> so we're. Um, um, analyzing the longest running civil war in Southeast Asia mm-hmm. between the government, GRP government of the Republic of the Philippines mm-hmm. and the NDF National Democratic Front um, with this one of his chief negotiators mm-hmm. is Joma Jose Maria mm-hmm. Sison. Um, but go back to that picture right there. Which one? This Look one? at the smiles on Atemek and Atirej, dude. Like, as... As old as they are, not saying you're old. <laughs> I just got them old, dog. They're 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 oh so they're God. super happy, and they look very young and joyful because of they're they're just happy. They're happy serving the people, man. Like it just brings about like their physicality of what the work they do, and still look super happy with their life, dude. Like, some people look hella old doing their job in their office, man. They're super young, but, like, they look super old, bro. It's just, like, seeing this, man, it's it's happiness. Happiness. It's, almost, it's like a manifestation of life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, in the physical in that the you physical, see. physical, bro. And so here's the manifestation <laughs> of life <laughs> of Kuya Chris kissing duck face, Kuya Jeremiah's, Kuya Kevin in the bag giving a kissy face. <laughs> this is a manifestation. That's a manifestation oh, of the Philippines. Right there. So we actually got to see, this was interesting for me, where we went to an open mic that was actually run with more of a religious, mm, um, yeah. how would you say, like organizations, interfaith, interfaith. Yeah. but it was an ecumenical service. And we learned that ecumenical means the different Christian groups yeah. coming together. Yeah. And But what was different from what from the diff from the uh, religious groups that I'm used to is that yeah. they slightly got political in mm-hmm. the sense of giving their statement here of what are the problems, the economic problems, the social problems, the political problems mm-hmm. going on, wanting just and lasting peace, yeah. getting onto the campaigns of want of um, supporting the peace talks yeah. and all. So it shows this. Um, connection between religious organizations yeah. and their capacity to be forward yeah. with their political stances. I want to see more of that here in the U.S. Like, I want to see how religious religion and religious sectors actually play out their role in politics, man. Mm. Because it is a, it is you can't have religion as part a factor of of politics, and most of the. Um, youth groups that I go to kind of avoided that dialogue of the economic struggle, the all these other political type of struggles. So I need to. I also want to see more research and dive into that. Yeah, because in the Philippines, they're doing it, man. They are doing it. 
but i don't go to church and they started singing religious songs in the beginning and i was like oh i'm out (laughs) you said i'm out you went straight upstairs (laughs) no that was in the end that was for the prayer (laughs) but i have nothing against them i don't know was like looking at at you like (laughs) why did this guy run away is he burning up or something (laughs) but there's at the meg I mean, at the lane. At the lane. Like, oh, oh, bro. <laughs> Ooh, did you hear that? At the lane. <laughs> Got their names wrong. My bad. But here, here was a this beautiful was the transition group. right here. So mm-hmm. in the Philippines right now, as context for those listening, uh, the Lumad groups are indigenous groups in the Philippines and they have been displaced. A lot of them yes. have been displaced from their schools because of military presence, military presence. in their communities. Mm-hmm. And a history behind that is that there's conflict over their land. Mm. There's organizations That's true. That's true. Um, or there's corporations that want to use the land for mining uh the resources that are there mm-hmm. while schools exist on this land while communities That's thrive nice. and live off this land right and this is one group um from alkadev i believe and in 2015 they actually witnessed their teacher and two community members killed in front of them by mar- paramilitary forces and I think justice has yet to be seen for those who have been killed. And so this is like real, real shit. This <laughs> is a re- reality. The, 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 that's the simplest thing I can say. Like, yeah. imagine going to school and seeing folks killed right in front of you. The director of your school being having their throat slit right in front of the class and the intimidation going on to get these folks out of the area yeah. right and then the media is telling them that these people are rebels mm. that they're teaching them communist theories or communist education Nah, man these are people who just want to protect their land and also just learn about life and the educational aspects of it they're not trying to hurt nobody mm. But then, like, it's the, their, their teachers are getting killed, but in the media, they're saying that these people are bad. Like, in the reality, man, their teachers and people are actually being killed by paramilitary groups. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. Yo, but some of these youth were so sharp. Yeah. Like with their answers and their understanding of the conflict, their understanding of the oppression that they their communities are facing. Mm-hmm. But in response to that, the strength of their collective voice and them really speaking on, hey, this is wrong, but this is what we want. Really taking a stand and fighting for justice Mm -hmm. and they're like what 12 years old 13 years old like speaking with such a vigor tenacity and clarity it's so humbling yeah like bruh i was playing game boy at 13 i was surfing the internet and clearing my history to try to hide my tracks of looking at stuff i shouldn't be looking at but while these kids are fighting for their right to education and that's all they're stuck into is to just like be they're just being more sharp and more sharp every second bro but that's the importance of international solidarity Mm -hmm. in order for us to really understand what is going on if we are going to claim the title of being filipino even filipino american if we are going to rep the flags which i do right I got to be, I'm going to hold myself accountable with that. Yo, I got to understand what are the issues going on there right now. And how are we actually going to contribute to development, contribute to justice, Mm -hmm. contribute to addressing the issues, Mm. the corruption there. That's right. If we are going to claim Filipino, right? Claim Pinoy, right? It ain't just joining a club at school, Mm -hmm for social life right maybe the club can be used for engaging our intellect and engaging our education to really know the truth yeah about what's going on in the philippines about the corruption about the poverty about the injustices and 
it's it's like very humbling to think like bruh i've grown up here in the u.s with so much privilege to even just go to school Mm -hmm. i had the privilege to decide not to go to school Mm -hmm. imagine that some people are fighting for their right Mm -hmm. while i had the privilege to decide "Ah, i'll put it off for a year i'll just try to work Mm -hmm. i'll just try to do things on my own Mm -hmm. this and that it really puts things into perspective that a lot of differences there's a lot of differences in our lives just by even our location yeah about where our families have been able to uh, migrate to and uh, raise us right Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to see a marginalized group being very educated. Uh. Because like marginalized groups here in the States, when they're not educated, they buy into the profiting news of the mainstream media, bro. And we are uneducated. I'm, I'm a victim of that, dude. That's why like, I'm glad I went to the Philippines to actually see that and be inspired by that, man. There's marginalized groups that actually buy into the oppression or the, um, how would we say, the hierarchy that subjugates them, right? We see the self-hate. We see the people who um, are like, no, just assimilate. Mm -hmm. Don't speak up. Just be part of the uh, culture or be part of the mainstream, right? Instead of questioning things like, why is it like this? Why? And trying to change it. Exactly, man. Because it's... It's, that's the power of hypnosis. It's like it's media, hypnosis, media hypnosis. It is. Of, it's like psyops, right? Yeah. It's like a psychological war of yeah. what they promote in the media, what um, arguments that they push out, and yeah. what they expect you to believe. Mm-hmm. They'll criticize for you for speaking out a mm-hmm. certain way, and then it gets replicated in our own families, where yeah. they say, "Why are you being political?" Don't be political. Why it's, are you speaking? Why are you like this? Why are you inciting hate? Yeah. Even just talking about issues of race like exactly, that. Exactly, man. Issues of economy, right? But it ain't going to change if we don't speak on it. Yeah. And these folks, what I'll give respect to is, bro, they're really putting their lives on the line yeah. because they can be targets yeah. for killings. Like being up in the forefront of speaking on what's wrong, it. I mean, there's, there's. I think one number that was told to us um, was that in the southern Mindanao region, just this year, there have been thirty, at least thirty extrajudicial killings. Thirty extrajudicial killings. That's just in that specific region. That's just the southern Mindanao region. What do you? What else in the other regions, right, of the Philippines? If you People, combine them all, that's these, sad dog. People are dying prematurely. We should be living up until eight. 800 or something at least 100 (laughs) (laughs) we should live up until 90 dog (laughs) not die at like 20 not die at like 18 in the Aita community they said that Kuya Sunny Kuya Edwin were one of the oldest ones there was one guy who was older the one the house that we stayed at I think he was in the 60s or almost Mm -hmm. 70 but majority of the folks aren't that old it's It's kind of crazy yeah um but shout out to this community, beautiful community. I should print this picture, dude, and put it on my wall. Yes, print that, frame that. Yeah, I'm gonna pr- print a whole bunch of these to remind me. It's easy to get caught back though in the flow it of is. things here. It snatches you in in the belly of the beast, dog. Yeah, you just you're just being chewed, and you're just back into like <laughs> wearing Yeezys and. Yeah. Uh, dressing up trying to figure out what to wear to impress people yep arguing with your girl about little shit while tempted to do things (laughs) drinking going out spending cash on yeah on fucking portable bluetooth speakers like that and forgetting the life lessons that really moved you here it's it sucks because i'm getting deprived from that fire but looking at these photos man talking like this helps it spark it back up again i think we need to find a process of kind of reminding ourselves somehow that's why i think i really need to sit down and also reflect on my journal and 
take the little snippets that can give me those little sparks of yeah. memories or sparks of um, inspiration, you mm-hmm. say, or even reminders of the lessons. Yeah. Right. Maybe there's a phrase yeah. that I can remember so this yes, and right. that in order to stay grounded. Me too. I've been wearing the the necklace I got from mm-hmm. the uh, evacuees. The, the from Lumad. the Lumad, Lumad necklace they made Excuse out me. of their hands. Yup, <laughs> and if uh, it's it's just lightweight, a reminder, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it helps. It actually reminds me of like, okay, what's the bigger picture here? Why mm-hmm. am I pursuing education? Yeah. Why am I taking this class and that class? Yeah. What will I actually do, right, with this? And I think it's important for us to remember because yeah. it's so easy to get get caught back in the like socializing going out like who's my friend mm-hmm. this and that and then even the flow of just school what class will i take how can i what how much are my loans how much will, will i find a job this and that and forgetting uh, kind of forgetting to find ways and how to participate to the true progression of the philippines yeah right but i guess that's something we got to work on it's yeah. not an overnight thing, right? Yeah. I've been doing this for fucking three years, going on these community trips, yeah. and it's still lightweight. Uh, something I still not even lightweight, heavyweight. Something I got to work on. Do you find talking to people about this makes it a way to come back? Yes, yeah. yes. Especially if I'm able to share, yeah. speak on things. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I still need to make sure we connect with Dessa and Jeremiah yes. and be consistent with check-ins mm-hmm. and being able to speak on our stories, speak on our experiences. Yeah. Because I think if we don't, we start to forget or yeah. even it gets kind of shelved in our yeah. mental library. Mm-hmm. It also becomes kind of... Uh, calloused over time like oh we don't oh yeah i cried this and that but the real connection to the experience gets um diluted unless we do certain things either Mm -hmm. take action write about it uh speak on it Mm -hmm. share i think Mm -hmm. because uh, i think maybe on some level that we are social animals and our experiences get solidified when we speak on things they do get solidified it's true um, and it's something I still got to work on. I know. Uh, but coming back to this right here, though, this is transitioning to Mindanao. Mindanao. Just imagine Kuntan just playing behind our words when we say Mindanao. Dude, bro, Mindanao, when we went, there was martial law going on. What was your experience like? Literally, my experience was cool just knowing that my last name was upheld to a higher status <laughs> so lauren zana i think he was like secretary of defense yeah, or something yeah, that's correct in the philippines uh-huh. so you don't think you're related to him i don't think so but just having the name so many people mentioned it yeah. when they saw your last name they're like lauren zana are you related to blah 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 i, I guess he's a big name i actually didn't i actually didn't know about him until before our trip um, but I guess everybody knows. But I don't like him because he was the one that actually uh, implemented martial law with the gong. So uh-huh. he probably, he's a part of the martial law. So I remember when we would step off sometimes and people would look at your license, at least at one time. Yeah. Where he's like, oh, Lorenzana? Yeah. Like the mil- at the military checkpoint, they would be like, oh. Yeah. It gave you that kind of like inside. I didn't want to say yes, but (laughs) outside it, I had to. You're just like, yeah, I'm related. Yeah. 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 But it's crazy to think we were in Mindanao during martial law. It is. It is crazy, dog. Because we have the context of martial law during Marcos, right? Mm -hmm. We have those stories of excesses mm-hmm. of abuses mm-hmm. by those in power the military who yeah. would do crazy things mm-hmm. at least as the reports come of torture of killing of rape of uh just extreme abuses of power yeah. right because there's no 
uh, writ of habeas corpus, I believe, like the pr- the due process. Mm. Uh, you have these rights are taken away from you during martial law, and yeah, it's scary. At least I was scared going into Mindanao yeah. when we first got there. But did you loosen up a little bit? Yeah, once we were with our like Kuyapele and mm-hmm. other uh, local organizers, I had a strong feeling that okay. Um, I have a feeling our safety will be prioritized yeah. in terms of going to certain places, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, it wasn't su- super alarming, but it just was like when you think about it, disconcerting, right? It was like disconcerting. to th- see all the military around, big every st- like with the big ass guns, checkpoints to tell you get out the car, yeah, um, see your IDs, and to think that we were just there what a week and yeah. people are living there right yeah. people are going through it some folks i was told when we went past the checkpoint and there was a long line yeah. of people those were the folks who did not have proper id and were instructed to go back imagine that having to get That's off such and a then inconvenience yeah um but it's cool we were talking to people in Davao and Iligan City, and they were saying, "Oh, it's better that there's martial law here because of the kids. They're not, you know, messing around at night." Remember when we were yeah. in the taxi cab? Yeah. So it's kind of cool to hear that from a local. You know what I mean? I think one answer or one perspective on that is to remember that people have different experiences mm-hmm. especially considering where they are like mm-hmm. for example it may be in the city it's yeah. a little more uh things are a little more set in their ways already yeah. the the habits of people That's going true. this and that but the problem with martial law as explained to me is that if they you are already in an area that is militarized and has conflict between the military and the local people because of maybe uh, mining operations operations. or uh, conflicts over land. Those areas become a little more dangerous because it gives leeway. Yeah, There's like a history of militarization in the area, so it could just push things forward. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a multifaceted discussion it's it's huge yeah you can't just answer it from one perspective but what i know at least for me was bruh this ain't necessarily the best situation for the youth and for Mm -hmm. their access to education that's right and we were blessed to be able to go to miss v yeah but miss v stands for uh Mish- Middle now Middle interfaith, interfaith service. Yeah, something with interfaith. In I it. know there's interfaith. Yeah, because their specific incorporated. Yeah, yeah, their specific goal was I think even in their theme song was uh, Muslim, Moro, and Christian. Yes, right yes. to get them together and all. That's right. And yeah, talking about progression, Miss V, man. Um, this is one of the projects that I want to help out. Because right now, as an update, Kuyupele is coming together with uh, the Kuling Tan um, instrument to be there so they can practice their uh. culture, you know. And also, look at those desks, though. Like, it's like a bench made out yeah. of the, you know, the people. <laughs> like, they didn't look too comfortable, man. And they're in there for quite a while. So, better desks. Look at that. Wow. Yo, they need teachers. They need more teachers. One yeah. teacher was teaching two grades at the same time. Mm-hmm. Right. Mom, uh, Azria. Yeah, yeah. Opened up first grade, gave them their lesson, then would walk to the next door and then give the lessons for second grade and mm-hmm. bounce back and forth between the two mm. with over like 30, 40 students each. Yeah. And yeah, it was overwhelming to see. But it was commendable too. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, you're doing this. Yeah. This is crazy. Like you mad respect for their commitment to That's right. like live out there, mm-hmm. give up higher paying jobs. Imagine having like eighteen thousand solid de- department of education job and then transitioning to 
uh, this basically pro bono or they're yeah. only getting like an allowance of four thousand a month mm -hmm. that's one hundred dollars one hundred dollars less than a hundred dollars even for the month wow or their food and everything it's it's really um kind of representative of their commitment mm -hmm. right but wow. you you said you were thinking of becoming a teacher yeah i'm thinking about becoming a teacher here Uh, I say that with with confidence, but I mean, there's still more uh, planning to do in terms of my family, my relationship, you know, but it will steadily hopefully get there um, because again, like there's nothing like being Filipino, Filipino in your homeland. Huh. And it's like I have this... Uh, I had like this permanent web to be there because it really is what I want to do is basically build up my purpose in life before I die. Because what Kuya Pele said, you only have literally 20 to at least the age of 80 to actually or 60, 60 yeah. to build an impact in your life. And I want to be in that coffin and be like, Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I did my shit. I did my shit. I did my part. Yeah. 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 Especially if in our 20s when we're young, mm -hmm. when our bodies yeah, are really active. capable yeah. of doing things yeah. and taking action. Like working to have a nice house is cool. Working to have good health insurance, financial stability is cool, but you're not going to bring that to heaven, dog. Mm. You know, you're not, you need to plant seeds, man. So what do you? How do you see your purpose in the next few years? What is? How has this trip affected that? Purpose is to be sharp. Uh, second purpose is to be there in the Philippines, be active in the Philippines. So third purpose is also um, be active here also, and fourth purpose is to contribute with the movement in these laws that are um, being voted for and implemented. So, yeah that's crazy to think that you're uh, an american born filipino right american as hell bro steak and <laughs> steak shake and <laughs> <laughs> steak and shake <laughs> shake shack <laughs> the place is i heard it's okay it's i i went to it it's i <laughs> In and out still all day. All day. And there's two of them now. Later. <laughs> <laughs> It's right there down the street, bro. Okay, sure. um, <laughs> I need a four by four. Um, but like, it really, it's crazy to think that you're a Filipino American, like grew up here, mm -hmm. but has this real desire and to go back to the Philippines, even live there. Dog, every Filipino needs to be there. And see their ancestral land and how it is, man. Oh. The reality is there. If you're Filipino, the reality is in the Philippines. But the reality also is here too amongst your own families, you know, your situation. But just being there is different, man. It's different. What is so different about it? It's just the culture, the way of life, how you take your transportation, how you eat, how you speak everything about you is just different and i want that i because it's like growing up man i was in this colonized colonized body bro <laughs> from education to the way i was raised in the house and it's still lingering on me today i have this inferiority complex because of spanish colonization that was linked on me So this day in which I'm trying to break away now, you know, huh. from this type of communal education, man. Yeah. Damn. So we're going to see you in the Philippines, bro, in a few years. Bro, we have to. Ah. Marcus so, Garvey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Garvey. Before we end. Oh, um, shoot. We're ending now? We're not done. In a bit, because it's already 4.43. Oh, God. We all get bouncing a little after five, okay, at okay. around five or so. But I wanted to ask, right? You're transitioning. 
you're about to head off to Colegio to you Ukla. <laughs> you're about to head to Ukla. Yeah. How do you think this trip uh, is going to inform your education and what do you what just share with us a little bit about your plans and all? This trip will honestly help me to reach out to people more and to actually uh, apply that communal education. In the Philippines, everyone talks to each other with respect. And also, if you need help, ask for help. Like, I've been stuck in this individualistic mind. Like, I can do it myself. But it really takes a village to grow. And in this picture, it's a village. Everyone's growing, touching each other from the back. It's like a symbol that it takes a village to grow, bro. Uh. And to actually... Um, make real change in this world is through unity through unity and that's what i want to share and bring to the table at ucla and also connect with people at ucla to also go to these trips man to the philippines especially filipinos and also um other diverse groups in this world to also check out different third world poverty um nations bro third world poverty countries because uh we're being fed so good here but uh, there's the people are being exploited somewhere else man and also what i want to bring to the table is uh, be a part of different groups like anakbayan um different grassroots orgs because um it's it's a it's part of the greater good bro it's part of the greater good um and i want to be part of that uh i want to also talk and share my experiences and also live by my experiences when i go to ucla and after that after ucla is done go to pep after after pep you know just keep organizing keep organizing to push the movement bro and you'll be a teacher in the Philippines. Be a teacher in the Philippines. Shoot. But bro. hey, it's not going to be like for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's too much. <laughs> hey, but that's still a big commitment. That is to a go big commitment. like a year, man. That's how about you? What, what, what are you going to do? What is, how are you going to live on with these experiences after this? You're being a third round and actually f being in a very political politicized space in berkeley bro that's a political ass institution like what are you gonna be what are you gonna do with all these experiences and lessons at uc berkeley bro i don't know <laughs> that's that's why i ask you <laughs> <laughs> i don't know man um i'm still working through like processing the trip itself especially on finding ways on how i can share it yeah right i'm still trying oh damn i totally it even slipped my mind like i was supposed to sign up to conduct a workshop um and i was thinking to Dude, do it awesome, but man. it was the due date was yesterday i totally <sighs> it totally slipped my mind to apply for it um uh, but to find the spaces that i can speak on these experiences yeah. and share about it maybe even through um spoken word through music something where i can have a platform to share about this in order to encourage other people to do the same to go on trips to find ways how they can participate mm -hmm. and how they can contribute um to the philippines in the long run and yeah. to connect with these communities because there's a lot of lessons to be had and I'm in the process of even trying to find ways to apply those lessons, mm -hmm. right? Like I've had lessons like, whoa, a little epiphanies and I can search for them in my journals, yeah. but I really need to find ways to apply them, mm -hmm. right? There are different examples. Maybe it's doing like uh, the videos, like video reports, mm -hmm. which I was able to do just one out of how many mm -hmm. I still have to get done, right? But there's something important about sharing and speaking on mm -hmm. it, building bridges between 
ourselves between the Filipinos here in the U.S. with other allied groups, but also from the U.S. Mm. back to the Philippines, yeah. right? We have to find ways to support both. We can do it financially. We can support uh, organizations or schools, right, directly. And that's one of Laya's group. Uh, one of Laya's goals, right, to do one of these projects, mm -hmm. whether it's a basketball court or cementing their pathway, right? So we can connect financially, but also our own physical bodies connecting by going there to the Philippines. So mm -hmm. I really want to still support other people, especially Phil Ams, to go back and get in touch with their roots. If that makes sense. Um, and but I'm still in a in, in in that beginning phase because like right now, even transitioning to Berkeley, I'm just kind of like scoping things out yeah. right where can i fit in what are the spaces that are mm. open and available like what are the vibes like where is the opportunity to speak or share because it's just like even the first week week and a half right uh, i've only had like two days of class but i know time will fly so oh, i yeah. still need to maintain my connection with the community org, such as Laya, and with the people such as Jeremiah, you, Dessa, folks who have had similar experiences so that we can collectively process mm -hmm. and create plans. But personally, I really feel a big part of my plan is to go back to the Philippines, especially after finishing this degree, right? A big part of me is doing this degree for my family like my lolas mm. who want to see me finish but also as a part of it is to really make most out of this opportunity this privilege of education good so that That's beautiful we can find ways to give back and use it actually for those who are less privileged and it's a process man i don't have the fucking answer i got a I'll question just, though what is it to you this is for anybody who's watching, man. What does it mean being Filipino mm. to you? To me, I think being Filipino, like you can have it on different levels. I won't define it for other people, right? Because people feel connection with being Filipino with just Manny Pac-Man or <laughs> the flag. And I'm not going to diss on that because yeah, yeah. I've been on that Good. stage, right? Mm -hmm. I've had that like, yeah, I'm Filipino. I fucking love adobo, bro. And like sun and th the sun and three stars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's developing for me too where being Filipino or claiming Filipino also requires that connection to the Philippines that... Mm -hmm has an understanding of the realities mm -hmm. of the philippines um especially in the more marginalized communities mm -hmm. taking into account poverty into account corruption and the problems there alongside the beauty of community and culture and singing mm -hmm. right but what is the reality 360 degrees what is all of it the good and the bad and then being an active participant mm -hmm. in addressing these issues mm -hmm. not just talking about it not just complaining or addressing or acknowledging corruption but what are tangible actions that can be taken and participating in these movements wow. that are trying to address it i think for me that's what being filipino is and the manifestation mm -hmm. of participation can be different mm -hmm. for different people right yeah some people um, mobilize in protests and political action. Some people create songs. Yeah. Some people share with their families about mm -hmm. what's going on. But what, whatever method, it has to be self-decided, determined, right? But rooted in reality, rooted in the desire to address root problems, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just a superficial um, association with specific terms, specific right? Terms. Filipino or Philippine X or uh, like Pinoy or Phil Am. All right, they're, they're labels, but what do you do after with a label, right? Mm -hmm. That benefits not just you, not just a self-identification, mm -hmm. but 
other Filipinos? Mm -hmm. How are you really going to contribute to the growth, the development, and the justice of the Philippines? Wow. I think that's... And the food, bro. You got to get the seasick, bro. <laughs> I, um, this was another question. Last question. So. <laughs> If you, right now, what would be your title of your of an autobiography, of your autobiography? What? Uh, And why? Why are you asking me these questions? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. Uh, learning to be a kuya. Learning I think. to be a kuya. Learning mm. to be a kuya. The Bunsot Tales. Oh. <laughs> so it's like it's like twofold because Bunsot means youngest, yeah. right? Or Kuya means older brother. And I think uh, it's because I'm still in the process. My mm. autobiography ain't done, but from the position that I'm in right now, right, I'm still in the process of learning what it means to be a kuya quote unquote and what does that, that entail if i really call myself a kuya that still associates itself with filipino culture and what is a true kuya taking into account the philippines the real reality that we're talking about mm. right am i going to be a kuya just for myself mm. call myself a kuya so i can call other people oh that's my adding oh. <laughs> just for the <laughs> benefits of like being loud at a party yeah, and being yeah. cool as a kuya or will my association of the word kuya take into account my responsibility oh. to take real action mm. and real uh, contribute to mm -hmm. the progression of the youth to the children there mm. and so I'm still learning how to be a kuya and so I'm in the process of developing that understanding right but it's a learned characteristic it's, learned it's still characteristic. something that I'm, that I have to improve but one that I must improve mm -hmm. and must take action if I am going to self-identify with that. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the second part, life of a bunsa or whatever, bunsa. comes into that perspective of like, yo, traditionally the bunsa is given like whatever you want, yeah. right? It's like, and he's a hat, taking it easy and all. That's, mm -hmm. And that's what I kind of experienced mm -hmm. in my life, being given so many uh, privileges of being able to immigrate to the U.S., mm -hmm. right? Going to a nice uh, public school, mm -hmm. being able to decide for myself, yeah, I won't go to, go to college right now. I'll take a year off and go back to the Philippines and drink and party mm -hmm. and go out and taking that life into account, right? And comparing it with the responsibility now with the understanding of being mm. a kuya, of yeah. calling myself a kuya and, okay, wh what do I have to do mm -hmm. to really earn that title, right? Because a real kuya, in my opinion, is, you know, you know we give that to someone older, but there's a real depth in earning, earning. the title of a kuya, mm. in my opinion, Uh To be able to be called that with respect is like a big deal. Yeah. And I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about like, what does that entail, man? What is, mm -hmm. what is your legacy mm -hmm. to other people, right? And not just for yourself, not just for myself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and seeing the youth mm -hmm. has, was very... Uh, humbling mm -hmm. right Th taking into account that my life as a bunso was very privileged and comparing to the lives of these kids who are mm -hmm. some don't have slippers to go to school right mm -hmm. some don't have the enough money to buy a uniform mm -hmm. right that they're struggling to pay 400 pesos a year mm -hmm. less less than that's less than was that less than 10 bucks they're mm -hmm. struggling to pay less than 10 bucks a year so in the public school so they go to this free private school right mm -hmm. so i think that's my that's what i would call my 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 new mixtape bro <laughs> <laughs> Got a biography bro a new mixtape is learning to be a kuya like learning to be a kuya. how about you you answer it Um, What would know. you title your autobiography and why? I think it's, uh, for me, I think it's being, also is being the bonafide abstract, being bonafide abstract, because um, bonafide means genuinely true, uh. and then abstract means complex, but not in, uh, but not necessarily in physical form, but derived, it can be derived from theories. So 
Like I want to be a walking, like I say in my raps, I want to be a walking history lesson. So my desire to be sharp and also spreading truth, spreading good, spreading good advice to those who really need it or they are in conditions where they don't receive it. I want to be that walking history lesson, that walking guy who can tell you that you are worthy, man. Don't listen. Don't listen to uh, this inferiority complex of education right now. Um, break through that shit because you are worth it, man. You are enough. You are worth it. You are beautiful. And But it's hard because right now I'm also going through a process, I think, where I'm transitioning to my goals are wanting to be sharp, but it's like I'm forcing it without it being a process, you know? Like, yeah. So being the bonafide abstract. Blah, bonafide abstract. Uh, do, 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 do. It's crazy like how um, you're Kuya Chris, right? Uh-huh. And now I'm the bonafide abstract. And how we both said that that's going to be, or that's what we would want in our uh-huh. autobiography title. Yeah. It's like it has to do something with, you know, what we call ourselves, yeah. what we name ourselves. Yeah. It's your name. Yeah. It really is. There's something powerful about self naming. Yeah, dude. there really is something about that. Like, it's a practice of taking, how would you say, taking responsibility or take, like, taking charge of really yeah. defining life for yourself. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. really a, a different. It's a good practice yeah. in a way. Yeah, if you really find the root of why you want to name yourself this or yeah. that, right? Damn. Yeah. All right, homie. Yeah, part two has to be with everybody because we still two. need to talk about Mindanao, yeah. dog. Yeah, we still have to talk about Mindanao. We have to get Jeremiah's on yeah. here. So shout out Kuya Jeremiah's for coming. But thank you for coming on. Do you thank have any you. last message for anyone listening? Uh, last message. I'm sorry if I offended anybody and wanted, <laughs> if I said anything stupid. <laughs> Fuck those or, you know, I really take critique, comment below. <laughs> I'm not a good rapper, I know, but I will be one day. <laughs> Um, that's it. I mean, <laughs> this is all fun. Um, I hope to also see you in this this space. Uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Thanks for coming on, home, homie. Hey. Peace. Peace.